Back on the Toffee TV, here is my three talking points. West Ham United, nil. Everton, nil. Today at the London Stadium, the Toffees grabbing a point on their travels, but still, only two victories this season. And I'm a bit frustrated in one way. In another way, I think it's a decent point, given second half, I don't think we were anywhere near as good as we were in the first half. And obviously, we've required Jordan Pickford to make some tremendous saves at the end to get us a point. And... A hard four point as well, let's be honest. And Sean Dyche will be pleased to think that the clean, they've got the clean sheet. Um, I'm sure he'll be a little bit disappointed we didn't in the first half when we were the better side. We didn't make better use of the opportunities. The second half was always going to slightly change because I think Lopetegui we will, would have been a little bit disappointed at half time when he got his team in the dressing room and, and changed a few things and you know, it, it they just looked to me like a side that had no confidence today, and that that's where I don't feel like Evan go for the kill enough. But we've ended up, like I say, without playing brilliantly, getting a point, and it, it's a game we absolutely could have lost. But for the guy, uh, for the goalkeeper, and he's where I'm going to start. And number one, he is England's number one. It's quite simply that. Anyone who doubts that, then I think you're stupid personally, because. I just don't see any goalkeeper that's anywhere near him at England at England level. Nick Pope is some way behind him, in my opinion. Some distance behind him. You've got obviously Dean Henderson at Palace is all right. He's not bad. Trafford, it's too early for him. And so when people have the debate over Jordan Pickford, I just find it really curious, really odd. Because if he played for one of the top sides in the league, no one would ever even it wouldn't even be a debate. Again, he's proved it today. Listen, has he been amazing this season? No. But he's been good enough today. A, a really, really solid performance from him. And he is a good, he's a really good keeper, and I think just sometimes it is a bit weird when people do have this agenda against them. Is he a little bit mad at times? Yeah. He's a goalkeeper. They're all a bit mad, aren't they? Um, but he does come up with some big moments and big saves. His distribution today was very good. Played a couple of tremendous passes with his left foot. It did everything correctly. And is is the main reason why I'm not sat here bemoaning another defeat for Everton because it wasn't it it, it wasn't as though Everton were absolutely brilliant or tactically we were tremendous. And that's why we got a result. We've got a result because our goalies dug us out. That's his job, of course. He's a goalkeeper. So he's there to keep the ball up the net. But he is a he's a huge part why Everton haven't lost this game today. And I just think sometimes the media that do well to remember on days like this when they're having a go with him that he is a really good goalkeeper. And instead of jumping on anything or putting it up for debate all the time, he is a really good goalkeeper. And and obviously, he's Everton and England's number one, so he deserved. He was my man at the match today. I thought he deserved that he was the the player who affected the result more than anybody else on the pitch, um, and therefore, in my opinion, deserved to be man of the match. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about Jesper Linsom, who I thought had a decent game today. Um, wasn't amazing. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not sat here going to wax lyrical about how amazing he was, but what I think we're seeing from Linsom. It's just little signs now that he's getting better and better each week. He's you know he's finished the game today, full ninety or whatever it was. So Sean Dyche has appreciated his work rate today. Uh, he's flashed a couple of one header wide, one header that's forced the only real save Fabianski had to make. He had to tip it over. It was a good header from Lindstrom. He done a lot of doggy work, getting back and putting tackles in and getting blocks in, and really offering himself something. I feel like he's got opportunities to shoot a little bit more, certainly in the first half on his right foot. He had a couple of opportunities to get shots away and he, he took a touch or he hesitated. He played a couple of lovely little round the corners. One when the Corey pointed for it and then didn't bother running for it. And a couple of other times he slew people in. But he's now, to me, showing more and more signs that he's becoming sort of embedded in what we want to do, uh, realising how hard you have to work to play in the Premier League. It's not easy, obviously. It's very different to the football he was playing, say, in Germany. And, of course, he was playing in the number 10 role. That is his preferred role. 
Uh, and it'll be very different, I imagine, even though he didn't have a great time last season at Napoli, it'll be very different to what he was being coached last season at Napoli and how they play. So I think there's cause for um, optimism. David Lindstrom. I think Harrison, we know what Jack Harrison's going to do. He's going to work really hard for you on that right-hand side. He's got a bit of quality on that left foot, but predominantly he's got to check back always onto his uh, left foot. And I think with Lin with having Lindstrom out there, that balance is there that he doesn't have to do that. We've got a little bit of competition for places there. It'll be interesting to see what the manager does when Broy is available and people like that who can drop into that wide forward. Is he going to play a genuine three? Is he going to go with two up front and have one sitting behind? Or or is he just going to choose one striker from four? That'll be sat on the bench when Chimiti's fit as well. I don't know. Will be very interesting. But I think Lindstrom is showing signs now that he's settling down. And uh, we're seeing more... Useful isn't the right way, but you know we're, we're seeing a player emerge now that can really help us so I was pleased for him today. Uh, third and final point is Everton to use this two week break now to get you know possibly to get a, a different way of playing. Not I, listen, I don't expect Sean Dykes to, to rip up everything he does and to go you know this total football nor do I want Everton to play Man, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind us playing Man City results-wise football. Um, not this last week because they've lost every game, but you know what I mean. But I would like us to try and work on a couple of different patterns of play, a couple of different formations. This is a good opportunity now. We're, we've won two games out of eleven. It's not. It's it's a poor, in my opinion, it's a poor start. A really poor start. Two victories in eleven games is. Isn't good enough. It's simply not good enough. Um, and therefore, we have to somehow come up with a different, a different way of doing things, a different way of threatening teams, putting teams on the back foot a little bit. That might be going to, uh, I don't know, a three at the back. I don't know, but or, or four four two a little bit more direct. I don't think that's going to happen. It feels like. The manager would go to three at the back more so, maybe a three four three or a three three five two where he can get two strikers alongside each other and just mix things up a little bit. I'm not talking permanently, but it gives us that opportunity. It gives us that opportunity to work on stuff, to to fine tune some stuff. Uh, and the other thing as well, which I'm sure they will be hoping for, Sean you know, Dyche, Ian Wong, Steve Stone will be hoping that when they come out of the other side of this international break, that Broy is very close to doing to doing the work, being involved. Hopefully Chimiti's a little bit closer to it. Hopefully James Garner will be ready after this. Irabunum will be two weeks closer to fitness, whatever that looks like. And then he will be given some more options. And, and obviously every manager wants options, don't they? You want as many options as you can. You want to mix it up. So hopefully... Everton can really use this this break to to re, reset a few things. The takeover will be two weeks further on and shouldn't be that far away now. The free king group looking as though everything's moving in the right direction there. Things happening there with, with how they should be. And we come out of this international break in a much more positive place. Big game after the break. Really big game against Brentford. They were scoring lots. They're conceding lots. So... Let's get after them. Let's get after them at Goodison. We can't, in my opinion, go out and just give them the, the emphasis, give them the front foot, let them dictate. Uh, I, I just don't believe that's how we need to play Goodison. I think we need to be on the front foot, engage the crowd and make it difficult for those other, you know, any of those clubs that turn up at Goodison, ready for a game, let them know they're in a game. Brentford represents an opportunity for three points before we do go into a really difficult run of fixtures. Brentford will be difficult, don't get me wrong, but even more difficult run of fixtures after the international break. So I hope all of this uh, time is used wisely and we come out the other side very positive and ready to take on the next bit of the season because it hasn't been good enough up to now. It really hasn't. Two wins in 11 is a, is a really poor return from the fixtures we've had. And when you watch the games as well, 
and you you come away from them, you think that was there for the taking. It really was, and we just didn't do it. Whether it's tactics, whether it's players not making the right decisions, the right choices, not being clinical enough, whether it's playing the wrong players, any you can roll them all together and you'll get a bit of the real reason why Everton haven't won more games of football, but got an opportunity to reset now couple of weeks break before a big, big game against Brentford in a fortnight. So let me know what you think in the uh, comments section below. I've done well to get as much as I have out of that. That game wasn't great by any stretch. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Have a great weekend and see you later.